Okay, so I had this question come in about the idea of how do I find a phase shift? Um, and what I want you to understand here is that you have a basic function for all sine functions and it has all these basic variables in it. Uh, and it's all depending on how your professor teaches you to you. Different textbooks use different variables to represent all of these things. Um, but essentially, if I take a look at the original function, which is sine x, okay, there's some things that I can start to do to it. And one of the things I can do to it is I can multiply it by anything I want. So I can come over here and I can say, okay, well now I have this y equals to so this value a, so this value a, and I just, that's my multiplier of sine x, okay? What you will note is that this value of a, all it simply does is takes the graph, so if this were the original sine function over here, okay, so a very quick drawing here, all right? Okay, and this is one, and this is a negative one here. All right, all this multiplier is going to do is it's either going to, if it's a fraction, all right, uh, depending on what the fraction is, the fraction is less than one, it's going to actually take these values and shrink them in closer to the x-axis and shrink this one up into the x-axis. If it's greater than one, then it's obviously going to stretch it away from the x-axis, okay? So when I multiply, whatever I multiply by, all that's going to do is affect how far or how close all of my points on the function either get closer, okay, or farther away, all right? That's all that that, that represents, all right? And that's the points that are off of, of the x-axis, okay? And that's important for you to understand. So that value, since that's what it does, is called the amplitude. So whenever I multiply my function, we call that the amplitude, all right? Well, there's some other things I can now do. Well, I can say, okay, well, y equals, well, let's say I have this a sine of x, all right? And thinking about this idea of y equals mx plus b, you were taught a long time ago that whatever you were adding to this y equals mx plus b was going to be your y-intercept. Well, very similar, okay? So if I add something out here, so let's say I add a b, all right? Well, whatever I add out here is now going to shift every point up or down. It's not going to shrink them, but it will move every point in unison up or every point in unison down. So essentially what you can think of this value outside is that was becomes your new y-intercept. So that's how much your graph is going to shift up or down. So for instance, that if I had over here, all right, the original function, okay. So here's the original sine function just drawn very quickly, okay. So there's that, there's that, there's that, and then there's that. So original function, there it comes. Okay, so just drawn very quickly. What it's going to do is that this value here will just, whatever it is, so if it's 4, then I take this point, I go up 4, this point, up 4, this point, up 4, this point, up 4, this point, up 4. Okay, so all this is doing is that is now called your vertical shift. So essentially, all this is doing is moving every point up or moving every point down. All right, so... None of these at this point have really affected this point right here moving left or moving right. And the only thing that's going to actually do that is the function itself. Notice that I haven't altered the actual function. Throughout all of these, okay, it's been sine x, sine x. So there's been no alteration to the actual function, which is why, okay, the function itself has not changed. Maybe it's changed how much it goes up or down, but it has not changed the idea of the function moving left or right. All this did was move the function up or down. All this did was kind of stretch how, you know, how high the wave goes, okay? So, the only way to really ever alter the, uh, the, the starting point here off of this value here is to alter the actual function itself. So what we have here is that comes back to this. So y equals one half sine. And now instead of just being an x, I'm gonna alter the function to now be x plus pi, okay? So because I do that, essentially this one half doesn't alter the starting point. However, okay, this now, because I've altered the actual original function, is now gonna also alter my starting point. So what I have to do is come up with an equation to solve for where is my new starting point going to be? So if this is what's altering my starting point, okay, imagine that I say, okay, well, I'm starting at zero. So normally I started at zero. 
Well, now I came up to you and I said, okay, well, guess what? If I had the original sine function, the original sine function would have just been x. So x equals zero, so boom, there it is. That's my original starting point. However, what I've done is I've altered it by adding pi units. So I took this x and I added pi units to it, okay? So if I want to find out my original starting unit, starting place now, all right, I'm just going to go ahead and solve for x. So I would do that just any algebraic process. So I would get rid of the addition here. So subtraction is the inverse operation of addition. So I subtract pi. When I'm in an equation, i got to go to both sides and subtract pi. So this go ahead, that goes ahead and cancels out. And now what I'm left with is negative pi is now going to give me whatever x is. Okay, so what I now have here is that this new function that I have up here that I've altered now starts at negative pi. And essentially that right there is now called the phase shift. So when I set this, whatever is inside here, however I alter the function, when I set it equivalent to zero and solve for x, when I do that, I get my phase shift. So in this case, I would have the original sine graph. So say I draw it over here. Okay, so I take this original sine graph up here, and all I'm going to do is move this negative pi. So my new starting point is going to move along the x-axis negative pi units. So here's negative pi over 2. Here, in this case, just so happens to be negative pi. So that's my new starting point. Now, if I want to properly graph this, I'm going to go to my amplitude. So again, remember if I said if it was greater than 1, it would stretch this normally, okay? away from the x-axis, so all my points would move away. So my original point is here, okay, but my amplitude is less than 1, so actually what it's going to do is it's going to suck my point in towards my x-axis, and the amount it's going to suck it in is half of the amount that it's at. So if I go down from 0 halfway, I'm now at 1 half, okay? So that's negative pi, then I go to 0, so I just follow my pattern of the sine function, and I just continue to do that at pi over 2. Okay, and normally it would have been negative one, but now it's one half. Everything moves in halfway towards the normal was. So from the starting point, I go up half, or you can think about it as going down towards it, okay? So one half, I'm going up half, all right? Going up half a unit. So that's what my amp amplitude is. This distance from here to the x-axis, or from here to the original starting point represents the amplitude. And I go to pi, and I go here, so what I'm left with is this idea of that's now my new graph. All right, so the most important thing to note here is this idea right here that the original starting value was at zero, so what I'm gonna do is just make a simple equation setting equal to zero to find what the phase shift is. All right, so let's do another example just very quickly just to uh, continue on with this. So another one might be, let's say I have y equals, uh, and we'll just make it a crazy one. So let's say we have 5 plus uh, 3 fourths sine of uh, 2x minus um, pi over 2. And close that out. All right. So again, whatever I'm adding or subtracting the function, and notice this case, I'm adding a positive 5. And the reason I'm adding is because it's a positive 5 there, okay? So this would represent my vertical shift, as it does in every function in the entire world, that if I'm adding a value outside, it's moving the graph up or down. This value right here just simply represents my amplitude. So wherever my starting point is, I'm going to travel up 3 fourths, and then over my however many steps I need to go. Okay. But again, what we're really interested in this video is the idea of phase shift. And the phase shift doesn't happen to change. It doesn't move left or right unless I alter the original sine function. And in this case, the original x value is being altered within this function right here. So what I simply have to do is go, okay, my new starting point is going to be, well, I alter the original by multiplying it by 2 and then subtracting pi over 2. Now, the question is, I had to start somewhere. Well, the original function started at zero. So what I now have is here is that I set the equation equivalent to zero, and I start solving for x. So I undo the op operation of a subtraction first by adding pi over 2, by adding pi over 2, okay? And I get 2x equals pi over 2. 
Now I'm not a fan of division, so what I do is I multiply, so I teach multiply by the reciprocal, so I'm going to multiply by a half to establish my x. So when I come over here, I multiply by a half. And this is more powerful simply because if I ever have a fraction over here, I'm going to have to do, if I'm doing it by hand or doing it mentally, I'm going to have to do uh, multiplying by the reciprocal if I'm doing division. So I just do it right off the get-go. get, get go. So I now do multiply my fractions. So I get pi times 1, which leaves me with pi, 2 times 2, which is 4. So what I now have here is I've essentially solved this by setting equivalent to zero because that's where the function originally started and I'm now left with my phase shift of x equals pi over four. So what that means is that I shift my original function pi over four units to the right. Okay, and that's essentially what your phase shift is. Um, I can go through and graph all of it, but uh, for, like I said, for this video, we're mainly just worried about phase shift. Uh, if you wanna watch any other videos, um, I do have another one up that has basically everything combined and I do it um, that way. So I hope that helps with the idea of phase shift.